Well, it's finally here. The snow. Yeah. Well, it was bound to happen sometime. What's up guys, my name is Phil. Welcome back to Miranda Detailing. In today's video, we are going to be detailing this little Jeep Wrangler. Well, that's not really a little Jeep Wrangler. It's actually a pretty large vehicle inside. Lots of landscape to cover inside. So, it has black carpets, black cloth interior, upholstery, and it has some dog hair. Not a ton, it's a newer vehicle, which is good, but it does have dog hair to contend with. So, we're gonna be using the Analong, the Analong, Analon, the Analon dog hair removal tool. So we're gonna show you how we use that in the vehicle, and we'll do the exterior, because this is a diamond, it's our full interior and exterior, but the exterior was already coated with some sort of coating. Um, so, what we're gonna do is wash the exterior, and then simply apply a topper. So, the topper that we're going to use is from Extreme Solutions called Topper. Basically, this is their very slick, like a spray sealant, but it's meant to go on previously applied waxes, sealants, and especially coatings. We've already used this stuff and it is amazing. It's very, very similar to their Jersey Devil, uh, but this gets more durability while this is really designed to act as that top slickness and hydrophobic uh, layer. So this is what we're gonna use for the exterior. We're gonna take a look at the plastic, see if it really needs it or not. Um, yeah, it's cold. And we're gonna start on the interior first. I think it's just easier for us that way. So we're gonna pull the Avalon out, pull the Jeep in, and then we'll get started. But I guess let's take a look at it as it's outside. Guys, if you're enjoying videos like this, and I hope you are, consider subscribing and clicking that bell so you don't miss stuff. So here's the Jeep. Yeah, I mean, there's some snow. It's not horrible. It's not gonna stick around because the ground is not frozen. Beautiful color. I love this green. But let's take a look at the interior really quick. And at least the seats are not plastered with dog hair. The carpets do have some particles and dog hair. You know, and there's some stuff in here, but really it's not, it's not too bad. We have certainly seen worse. And even the back area, we have the mats here that protect a lot. So, yeah, that's really not too bad. It's around the edges, it's around this area. The worst of it seems to be back here. So, behind the seat here, and yep, all of that. So that's a lot of real estate to cover back here. But that brush, that Anilon dog hair removal brush should make things much easier to deal with. And we do have some the back of the seat here. Usually that tool combined with the Lily brush, combined with the other Hoover uh, brush that we have attached to the vacuum, combined with your gloves that we're gonna use, that will remove all the dog hair. Between all those tools, you can't just have one tool, you need a couple. Exterior plastics don't look that bad, actually. So that's good. Avalon, sorry, but you're gonna have to be pulled out into the cold. So somebody wanted to wash the exterior first. So that's what we're doing. So 
So the number one thing you have to remember is dress warm. I mean, that's an obvious thing. Get some really thick nitrile gloves. Um, I just pull them over my sweater here so that things don't get wet and you don't want water in your gloves. So make sure to keep your hands nice and dry in there. Make sure to dress in layers. I have fleece lined pants. Those are awesome. You can find them usually locally. I found these at Walmart. I'll see if I can find some links on Amazon, but if I can't, try to find them locally. Just make sure they're fleece lined. They make a big difference. Get either a hat or earmuffs, cover your ears. That makes a difference when you're working. And if you're using a trailer or a van or a truck or whatever, you gotta keep your things heated. You have to keep them warm. There's no other way around it. So make sure to either have a heater, like in my trailer, I have a heater that kicks on automatically when it goes below 45 degrees. So I keep that in there and yeah, it's a little bit more expensive uh, to run that, but it saves all of my products. And I'm not gonna be using my products, trudging them back and forth between the garage and, and the trailer. I just don't have time for that. I'm not gonna mess with that. So I put the heater in there and it's fine. Um, I am looking into a hot water electric pressure washer, not an industrial type of huge pressure washer that takes up all this room. I'm trying to find a pressure washer that can use hot water. And I think I found one that can go up to 180 degrees. So I'm gonna try to get my hands on that and do some videos on it to use either in the trailer or in the garage. To have hot water when cleaning or warm water is really, really beneficial. Fill your five gallon buckets with hot water, as hot as you can get it. Because once you get on site, it's gonna cool down a little bit. And if you have gloves on, it's not gonna make that much of a difference. You'll, it'll feel really, really nice. Um, just be careful. If the vehicle, if it's really cold out, call it. Don't go out if it's 32 and below. That's just crazy. Nothing's gonna clean correctly. No protection is going to stick to the paint. I mean, it's, it's horrible. So, but if it's 40 degrees and up, you can bear it, you can do it. Um, just be careful if you are using hot water start on the paint first and then onto the glass. Let it cool down. Don't hit the glass with piping hot water, obviously. So this thing is now done. It's washed, it's rinsed. We're gonna bring it in. We didn't really need to clay bar it because as I mentioned, the customer said that there is some sort of a coating. It's not a ceramic coating, it's something else. I think that the dealer may have provided. It's not really beating water like a ceramic coating should. So first sign of I don't know what's on here. Yeah, there's, it's like flat. <laughs> so, yep. Yep. Dealership provided coatings. If they're not telling you what it is and you're not seeing the results, you know, there's an argument to be made where people say, oh, it's, if it's not beating, it doesn't mean the protection isn't there. How do you know? That's the visual indicator. If it's flat, how do you know protection is there? There's no way to prove that. So stop saying that. Beating is the visual indicator of protection. That's just a fact. So if it's flat like this, do you really think there's protection on here? Doubt it. That's how we judge that. That's how detailers know that there's no protection. Things stick to the paint, it's sticky. When we dry it and the towel drags across it, there's no protection. So for you guys who don't really understand don't say that. Don't say that beating is not an indication of uh, protection or, or not beating is uh, not an indication of protection. It's the visual indicator. That's why it does what it does. It provides slickness, hydrophobic abilities, and self-cleaning abilities as well, which just means things don't stick to it and they wash off easier. So keep that in mind. If you're learning to be a detailer, keep that in mind and don't pay attention to ridiculous things like that that don't make sense. This vehicle, obviously, I don't know what was put on it, but it doesn't seem to have protection. So we're going to pull it in and we're going to use topper because that's what the customer requested. That's what we talked about. So I'm going to stick to the plan and do that. It's cold. Oh, Ooh, boy. <laughs> that is swirl. We got some car wash scratches here. It's like straight line scratches all going across the hood. I know I probably shouldn't be pointing that out because that's not what we're doing in this job, but as a detailer, that's what you notice. So, you know, you might want to inform the customer of that. If they don't care, well, then whatever. Then don't worry about it. All right, we're gonna get the blower out. So this is gonna get loud. So cue the music.
everything is dried and look, oh boy, oh boy, yeah. We didn't use any clay mitt on here at all. We didn't clay it because it has the coating on it. Coating, whatever is on here. I don't believe it, unfortunately. Whatever the dealership put, it's nothing. But, well, what we're doing now is hitting all of the trim. So we're using the Stoner's Trim Shine, and yes, it does make a little bit of a overspray mess onto the paint or glass and things like that, but it's not a big deal. We do that first, then we wipe the paint. We'll do the glass at the end anyway. This will shine up all of the trim, make it look really nice. We'll wipe it down after it's soaked in. You see how it kind of pools up in some areas? That's okay, let it soak in, and then we'll wipe it down with a towel. So once all of that is done, we're going to use topper on all of the paint. Now I already protected up here. I already wiped all of this down. Um, actually, I used the new Turtle Wax Flex Wax, the Graphene Infused Flex Wax, and I just used it wet on the top here because this stuff is kind of weird. You don't want to use any uh, trim shine stuff. It's not that type of a material. It's really a matte paint. So if you use the Flex Wax on it, it's still wet. Um, I just, you know, it's damp and cold in here and it's taken a long time to dry. I basically wiped the entire top with the, fle the Flex Wax and it'll dry and it'll look like this. It already is starting to dry down and look really nice. So it will add protection and it'll bead water, but it's not going to add any shine to it. So we're not shining this up with the trim shine. This is painted. That's different. You can use a spray sealant or even a spray wax on there because it's not going to really increase the gloss, but this is a different material altogether. It's textured plastic that absorbs it, and it's meant to be kind of a satin finish. Some like it shiny, but it's going to end up to be more of a satin finish. But man, this color is beautiful. I love it. I just wish we could polish it and coat it with a true coating. Oh well. Now we're on to protection. So trim is looking nice. Yes, we'll still wipe it down. It's a little bit shiny. Let it soak in, like I said. We're going to be using Extreme Solutions Topper. This stuff is really, really nice to use. It smells delicious. It's very, very slick, easy to apply. So let's get started. So we'll apply it onto the towel. You can apply it onto the paint if you want. It doesn't really matter. This is such an easy product. It's a no-brainer and I haven't experienced any streaking or smearing or anything with this product. So it's just a nice all around easy topper to use. And it's great for maintenance. So if you already have a coated vehicle or even a waxed or sealed vehicle, use this for maintenance. It's gonna add gloss and it's gonna add slickness to the paint. And even though this has swirls and it has some light water spotting and that kind of adds to a little bit of a rough texture, it still feels nice under the towel. Not perfect, but much, much better. Why is that? Ah, I can too. Ah, nice. All right. Great. That's looking awesome.
So guys, we are almost done. This is the last area that we have to do. We also have the carpet mats over there to finish as well, but they're not really that bad. This is one of the worst areas. Really, the worst area was in here. Um, that I had to get from underneath the seat on the other side, then pull this down and then get under here. But this tool works extremely well for getting into those areas. The points on this get into all these weird little areas. You can actually grind like into these corners really well and get into these corners. So it does work extremely well. And depending on the carpet, you can use the large teeth, the medium teeth, or the fine teeth. And you know, you start with the large teeth, it gets the majority, then you work to the medium, then you work to the fine. You don't have to do it in that order. You use it for whatever reason you need to use it. If it's heavy um, carpet pile and heavy fur, then grab the large teeth uh, and, and use it that way. It works really well. I find myself not even putting my thumb or my fingers in here. I just grab it like so. And that's what I use to pull all the fur up. Now, yes, this tool is awesome, but don't just rely on one tool. One tool is not going to cut it. Yes, this is an awesome tool in your arsenal. I have to say, get it. If you're dealing with dog hair and nasty interiors, get it because it will save you. It works incredibly well. But as you know, you see me use this nozzle a lot. And this is one of the rigid nozzles. This has a rubbery tip here, not all the way to the end, just in this area, but it's great for getting in these tight areas between the seats and the console. It will also grab the hair. Remember, use grippy gloves. These are like thick, thick nitrile gloves. These work really well. And again, don't forget this tool. I still always go back to this tool for the final vacuuming because it gets all the little fine particles and hairs and sucks them up at the same time. So you need multiple tools. Don't just rely on one tool thinking that it's going to save you, you need multiple tools. You're a detailer, you need different tools in your arsenal to attack all these different areas, different carpets, different plastics, all sorts of different stuff. So remember that. But look how nice this looks. I also need to get a better light for the interiors here. This works really well, but there we go. Oh, let me get rid of that center one, there we go. So this is looking awesome. This I still have to attack the dog hair on. You can see the line. I just did that one side, and this side looks really nice. It's still got a little bit more work down there, but overall, yeah, turning out really great. All this carpet back here, you can attack with the Anilon tool. And again, remember, you can actually go into these areas. You don't have to worry about it damaging plastics or anything like that. It works really, really well. So, yep. I'm loving this tool. It is great. So again, if you want to get your hands on good dog hair removal tools, check out the links down below and you can get some of these tools for yourself. Well, the interior is now complete. It is looking awesome. So the mats are drying. We steam them. They'll be dry in like 20, 30 minutes. Not bad at all, because there's no stains on them. The rubber mats here were cleaned and dried. They're looking great. Remember guys, when you're dealing with dog hair removal, have a variety of tools. The Anilon brush here is definitely a winner. This thing is incredible. 
The different teeth on here really do make a difference. These will, um, the rough teeth here will really grab at hair, uh, dog hair in some of the deeper pile. And even this type of fabric, this type of really uh, thin fabric here. This is the only fabric on the back of the seats here that's like that. The rest of the carpet is actually really good quality. So thank you Jeep for actually doing a good job with your carpets. They actually clean up the dog hair really, really well. It's a nice plush pile and it looks awesome. Hey, wait a second. There's one little hair right there. There we go. Much better. But it came out great, guys. So again, remember a variety of tools, not just one. So let's take a look at the Jeep. It is looking incredible. And the carpets, oh, it's really dark in here. Hold on, let me grab a light. It's good to also have a light like this. I wish I had one that hung up. I may invest in that, uh, that hangs up inside the vehicle. But, oh boy, just blinded myself. But this one is really nice. I like that it has um, multiple lights here that you can choose from. Or you can have them both on. They're super bright. Great for paint correction, actually. So you can also use it on the interior. But interior looks great. Oh, look at that. Still, these little hairs float around ah, and make their way and stick to the carpet. So, eh. Well, this was perfect. And now just little hairs float around and stick onto the carpet. Look at that. That's just inevitable. It will happen. So don't go too crazy with that. Seats look great. They cleaned up awesome. All the center console, that really wasn't too bad. Just, you know, just dog hair everywhere, but that cleans up and vacuums up easily. And yeah, the rest of the seats here look great. And like I mentioned, when you pull this down, you can get behind and underneath down there easily. So you will have to move all the seats around and that goes for any vehicle. And the back here really came out great. Still a little damp from steaming back here, but that will dry and even off. Yep, looking awesome. And this here is actually just a shadow. It's weird, right? It's like the light comes in from weird angles and makes it look like it's stained when it's like weird shadows, see? That's all it is. I know, sometimes it's difficult to detail inside here. As much light as I have, we have the roof to deal with and the light's not coming into the window like natural outside light does. So you gotta struggle a little bit, but just make sure to have some lamps and some headlamps as well. That makes a big difference. Now the trim, check out the trim. We wiped it all down. It looks awesome. That's Stoner's Trim Shine. Amazing, we love that stuff. As you can see, we have a ton of it. So we have that on order all the time. It is really, really good stuff. So tires and wheels, they're looking great, I believe. All the tires were dressed, but the rubber really sucked it in. We're using 303 Tire Bomb and Protectant. It is really, really nice stuff, um, but it's not meant for a super high shine. It's more for a natural look, which that looks like a nice, natural, clean look. I really like that. If you want super, super shiny stuff, then you may have to switch to something else if you want. That's, you know, that's just personal preference. I think these look really nice like that. Wheels cleaned up incredibly well, and paint is looking bright and glossy, and it feels very, very slick. Yeah, it feels awesome. Oh, even the windshield cowl, that looks amazing. And other than those horrible straight line scratches from car washes and who knows what, you know, the paint still looks really glossy. That color is amazing, isn't it? I love it. And man, so much plastic. You always gotta keep up on plastic. Don't think you can just hit it with something and it'll last months and months and months unless you're going to use a true coating like G-Technic C4 or Gion Trim or whatever other uh, ceramic coating you put on trim. That will last a long time. That can last up to two years. Dressings and other protectants like that, polymer-based ones, they're going to look good for maybe a couple of weeks, maybe a few months, but keep up on it. Just keep applying it and it'll eventually actually absorb those oils and it will stay like this longer. Just keep up on it. Don't let it go and not put anything on it. Now you notice down here, it's drier. We just keep that clean. We, we don't want to apply anything shiny hey, down there at all because of slip hazards. So unfortunately, we're gonna keep it like that. If the customer wants to dress it himself, 
that's up to him, but that's a liability for us. We do not dress those areas at all. We're just going to leave it like that and it's just safer. So if you're a business, keep that in mind. Don't dress these areas because you could be held liable for any injuries. But if you're doing this on the side or for your own vehicles, you do whatever you want. If you're going to put a dressing on here or a coating, a coating would be better because it's not slippery. Um, that would be the best choice. Coat it or if you're going to put a dressing, wipe it down really, really well. That way you don't have any slip hazards. So guys, that's gonna do it for the video. The Jeep is done and customer will pick it up in a few hours. And yeah, it came out really nice. Check out the top. Remember we used the Turtle Wax Flex Wax on the top here, it looks great. Yeah, it turned out awesome. So you can use that stuff anywhere. I, If I don't already have videos on that, I'm having a bunch of the new Turtle Wax Pro Line products coming. And if you wanna check out those videos, I'll put links down below or put it up in the card. So keep an eye out for those. But guys, this thing is just looking so nice. I just can't get over this color, I love it. So guys, you see us use a lot of products, a lot of different tools, and I get a lot of questions and sometimes accusations about just pushing products. Why would I just push products? That doesn't make any sense. I am a detailer, that's my main business. YouTube is a side thing. So I'm not making these videos to get rich on YouTube. I mean, that would be nice, but that's unrealistic. That's not gonna happen. So that's why I'm not just gonna push products or say that this product is the best. I have a variety of products because I am a business. I need a variety of products. True, you can start a detailing business with just a few products, but when you get years into it, you're going to be encountering lots of different vehicles, lots of different surfaces and materials. You need to have a variety of products to attack each of those materials and fabrics and paints and plastics and rubber parts and all sorts of things. So you need a host of products and tools. As you saw in this job, these different vacuum nozzles and brushes, those are vital. Those are so important. So if you're starting a business or you need tips or advice or tools and products to use for your detailing business, then check out the links below. That's why I have them there. Yes, I do make money from that. It's a small commission from Amazon or Car Supplies Warehouse, but who cares? A lot of people do that. Again, I'm not getting rich off of that. It's just passive income that I'm making from that. So you see me use a lot of products and I use products that I like. If there's a product that I don't really like or it doesn't quite work well, then I'm honest about it. I'll tell you about it. And it might just be user error. It just might be the type of, I don't know, surface that that product is not working on. For instance, I didn't really like the Optimum uh, tire coating. That just didn't work for me. I actually used it on other tires, tried it all sorts of different ways. I applied a very little bit. Someone said that I applied too much. Well, you're not here. You didn't see what I did on other vehicles. So no, that product just doesn't work for what I do. On certain tires, maybe. But those are the type of products that I'm not gonna use on a regular basis because they don't give me consistent results all the time. I need products that give me consistent results all the time. So that's what I use and that's what I recommend. So what we use today was Topper from Extreme Solutions. Extreme Solutions has amazing products. Just hands down amazing products. Where did that product go? It was over here. Nope. Aha! Here it is. Topper from Extreme Solutions. I'm loving this stuff. It is an incredible product. So is it going to give you extreme durability? No, it's not. That's not what it's made for. So each product is going to have its pros and cons. It's going to have its usage. So if you want to get it for yourself, then go ahead. But if you already have products that you use that you enjoy, then stick with those. Don't just go and buy all the different products because you see us using them. Get them little by little and weed out the ones that you don't like. Keep the ones that you do. That's what we do. We continue to use these products because they do produce such good results. And the ones that really don't produce that well, I don't use as often. Sometimes I'll pick them up and I'll try them on something else. And again, if it doesn't yield the results that I want, eh, I put it on the shelf and I don't use it for a while. Sometimes they'll work, um, but it's not all the time. It's not consistent. So again, I'm going to reiterate, 
Use products that consistently work for you all the time. That is going to save you time and money. But if you are the type of person that you do like to, I don't know, spend money on products and try different things, I know there are many of you who do that. It's an enthusiast thing, you enjoy trying different products, you wanna try different things, then go ahead. But don't just get it because you see me using it or because I said that it's a really good product. It might be a great product, but if you already have something that works for you, then just stick with it. Because of being on YouTube, we showcase a lot of things. We have companies that send us products. We just have a lot of products now, and that's enjoyable for me. I enjoy that. Even when I wasn't on YouTube, I was buying different products and using them and enjoying them. That's just me. So if that's you, if you enjoy doing that, then so be it. But if you're the type of person that you just think I'm pushing products and blah, 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 go away. I don't really need that type of a, a viewer. I want people who understand what we're doing here. We're not a YouTube detailer. We are detailers who have a YouTube channel. There's a difference. So guys, rant over. I have to say that stuff every once in a while to clear up the confusion. There's questions and comments that come in that are just coming out of left field. People don't really understand. And it really comes from not watching the entire video. I have over 300 videos on here. And just because the title says a certain thing, there are tons of different tips and tricks and advice and things that I say throughout the videos. If you don't watch the whole thing, you're gonna miss stuff. So subscribe and click that bell so you don't miss stuff. And if you're subscribed to the channel and watching the videos, watch the videos all the way through. Take a break if they're too long, but watch every video all the way through. You might miss things and I explain things all the time and I still have to answer these crazy, ridiculous questions and comments because people aren't watching the entire video. So watch the entire video. It's a learning process. Understand that. For you guys who are regular here and you watch all the videos all the way through, you know what I'm talking about. The comments come in because people are not watching or hearing what I'm saying. They're just seeing stuff and commenting on it. You need to watch and listen. That's how people learn. That's education. If you go to college and you don't do anything, you're not going to learn anything. doesn't matter how much money you spend or how much time in class you spend. If you're not listening and watching and even practicing what you are learning, then what's the use? That's what this channel is becoming. It's becoming more of a teaching channel. So you're going to see interior and exterior videos of us going through the job using the products. Not so much just a pure review type of video or review channel. That's not what I am. You're going to see us using these products in real life, in our real day-to-day -day business. This is a detailing business, and that's what we do. So guys, thank you for watching. Remember, check out all the other videos that we have. At the end of the video, you will see a playlist up in the corner. Go click on that, and it will bring you to all the other videos that we have on this channel. And if you're feeling bored, Go all the way to the beginning and watch our very first video. It's, it's kind of funny, but you'll see where we came from. So we'll see you guys next time. Have a great week. Take care.